Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how we can sum a column of data that has multiple and vertical criteria in it. And we're going to use two methods, one using sum product and the other using the sum ifs function. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have a list of names here a list of divisions, and 12 months of the year. And I want to be able to choose a name from the list, a division from the list, and also a month, and get the total of that set of criteria. So here I have drop-down lists where I can choose a name, for example, Joe, a division one, and the month of May, and Excel will give me the result either using the sum product function or the sum ifs function. So let's walk through both of these scenarios and see how they work. So first, to make things simple, I have several named ranges. So if we go up to the name box, you can see I have data which goes from C2 down to N36. Those are our values. I have division, which is the list of divisions in column B, month, which is January through December in row one, and name, which is the list of names in column A. So naming ranges makes it much easier to structure your formulas and also to review your formulas so you know exactly what the values that you use in your formulas are. So with that said, let's take a look at the sum product function first. Now sum product, if we take a look at that, sum product returns the sum of the products of corresponding ranges or arrays. And you basically have as many arrays as you need and it will multiply those arrays together and then sum up those products. So in our scenario here, I basically have two arrays. The first array takes the name range, which is column A, and says where name equals Q2, in this case Joe, times where division, what's in column B, equals Q3, in this case division 1, times the month, which is the months January through December in row 1, that equal Q4. So if we hit the F9 key to see the result of that first array, and I expand my formula bar down, you'll see that it's a series of zeros and ones. Everywhere that those three are met, you'll see, for example, here is a number one here, and there's another number one there. And so it found two instances where that criteria is met. So if I hit the escape key, it'll take me back to my original formula. So it will take that array and multiply it times the second array, which is the data range, which is again from C2 down to N36. And when it does that, it will find that there were two results that add up to, in this case, 360. Just to prove that out, we'll add our filters here, and let's filter down by Joe, division one, and for the month of May, you see that we have 160 and 200, it adds up to the 360, that is the result from our sum product formula. So again, what we were able to do is to have one array that filters down the data by taking the three different ranges and having them equal our criteria and multiplying those three times each other and that forms one array and then that times the second array and then it returns our values which are then summed together and we get the result of 360. So it's a very simple and easy way to filter your data and have criteria both vertically and horizontally to come up with a solution. An alternative to that is using the sum ifs function. Now if we look at sum ifs, it adds the cells specified by a given set of conditions or criteria. 
So you first identify your sum range, and then you have criteria range one and criteria one, criteria range two, criteria two, and so on and so forth. So in our formula here, what we did was we used the offset function with match and the count function to determine what our sum range is. And we'll walk through that in a second. Then our criteria range 1 is the name. Our criteria for that is whatever's in Q2, in this case, Joe. Our criteria range 2 is the division. And again, our criteria 2 is whatever is in Q3, in this case, division 1. So having your two criteria is very simple and straightforward. The key here is determining which columns worth of data that you want to apply that criteria towards. And we're using the offset function to accomplish that. So let's take a look at the offset function. Offset returns a reference to a range that is a given number of rows and columns from a given reference. So you can see you start out with a reference, then it, you tell how many rows down you want to go, how many columns over, then how high do you want the range to be, and how wide do you want the range to be. So let's look at the offset function that we used in our sum ifs formula. In this case, we decided that our reference was going to be cell B1. So that's where the word division is. Then we wanted to go down one row so we could be in the row of the first row of data. And then how many columns over do we want to go? Well, we use the match function to match, in this case, May, in the range of months, which was C1 to N1. And then how high do we want that range to be? So we use the count function to count the number of values in column N. In this case, that would give us 35. And then how many columns wide do we want to be? We just want it to be 1. So if we look through this, again, we started with the offset function. We started with B1 as our reference. We go one row down. How many columns over? If we hit F9 here, you'll see we went five columns over. That gets us to May. And how high do we want that range to be? In this case, it's going to be the count function of column N, which is 35. So we start at B1, we go down one row, over five, 35 rows high, and one column wide. And that gives us that range for the month of May. And then we just said, OK, for that range, give me the name that equals Joe and the division that equals division 1. And again, the result is the same, 360 as we had with the sum products function. So that is how you can use either sum product or sum ifs to sum up a range and have multiple criteria both vertically and horizontally in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.